Decluttering my wardrobe has actually changed my life. I've been doing that for almost seven years now and I've learned a lot in the process of going through my wardrobe again and again. And so today I do want to share the things that I wish I knew. So these are kind of mistakes I made or just things I learned along the way that could help you if you are just starting out or in the middle of decluttering your wardrobe, still not happy with your wardrobe, to hopefully reach like a point where you are satisfied and content faster. So the first thing that I wish I knew before starting to declutter my wardrobe is I wish I knew that it's not just going to be decluttering once. Now, if you think about it, maybe that makes sense. But I think a lot of us think of it as like, this is this one huge task. I'm going to declutter my wardrobe and then I'll end up with my dream wardrobe. But the reality I think is that it is a process. If you have an overwhelming amount of clothes, be ruthless and cut it down by quite a bit if you know that you really want to have a much smaller wardrobe. And I can promise you, if you stick to the things that I'm telling you in this video, you will never be this overwhelmed again. And it will be better for, for a long time, if not for the rest of your life. But still, I don't think you need to put that much pressure on yourself to like think that you have to get it right the first time. And this actually already leads me to the second point and something that I got wrong for a long, long time. And that is that I thought that I needed to get to like the perfect wardrobe. Usually my life changes, my clothes change, my preferences change, my ideas change. So even if my wardrobe is perfect for one day, maybe the week or month or year after that, it's not perfect anymore because my favorite pair of pants ripped because um, I want to have another kind of sweater. And so I think it's an illusion and something we don't even need to go after that image of like having a perfect minimalist capsule wardrobe. Instead, and also because I really care about sustainability, I think it makes sense to just work with what you have and make sure that you can get like a better wardrobe, a wardrobe that makes you more happy. Maybe, of course, you also need to like buy some things because you have some like gaps in your wardrobe, but I don't think it's necessary to want to achieve like the perfect wardrobe right away. Having a wardrobe that really makes you happy is a process too. And then the third thing I really wish I knew goes hand in hand with that again, because my um, attempts to make a perfect wardrobe is ha decluttering a lot to really have a very small amount because I, I dreamed of like having a super tiny minimalist wardrobe and getting rid of everything that's not absolutely perfect but then I realized that my preferences change over time as well. I wouldn't say that I made like a huge mistake in the past but I've definitely decluttered a few things that I maybe would wear again now. So what I want to say is if you feel like you still need to like edit your wardrobe and it has to be less in contrary to the past where I thought that you should like decide I want to have that piece. I don't want to have that piece. Have everything in your wardrobe wear everything all year round and the rest declutter. I think now maybe put these things away to come back to later. Sometimes we have like perfectly good pieces. I had a green um, wool sweater and it was like 100% lamb's wool. It was a good color. It was a good cut. And I think the moment I decluttered it was just because I thought like the color shouldn't be in my wardrobe, but it was actually a color I like on myself. So I now kind of regret that and I would take this um, sweater back into my wardrobe if I still had it. If you're pursuing a minimalist wardrobe, not because you need to size down, but we, because you want to have like less decisions to make and a smaller wardrobe, then I think it does make sense to maybe have just a small pile of things that you generally like, but that don't fit in your current wardrobe or that you don't feel like wearing at the moment. This should not be a backdoor for like your huge maybe pile to stay in your home and to not declutter anything. And then the fourth thing also kind of has to do with colors and wanting stuff to fit into your perfect wardrobe. And that is, your wardrobe does not have to prove anything to anybody. You don't have to have a concept that you can explain to anybody that makes sense. You don't have to stick to some rules. You don't have to stick to a certain color palette. 
you do not need to prove anything with your wardrobe to anybody. Your wardrobe should make you feel good, should make it easy for you to get dressed. And in the past, I made the mistake to like overanalyze um, over critically like how my wardrobe looks from the outside and that's maybe because I'm posting pictures and videos of it online so I'm kind of judging my own wardrobe based on what I think other people would think. That was also I think one of the reasons why I decluttered that green wool sweater because I thought like my wardrobe looks better and looks more put together without that sweater because of its color and that's just ridiculous. <laughs> Like, I do want to encourage you to have your wardrobe for yourself and to not care if it looks inconsistent or if you think there are must-have pieces but you don't have them because you don't enjoy wearing them. Or if you have 10 black t-shirts, even though some people say three is enough. It's your wardrobe. So I'd really want to encourage you to make sure it suits your life. And then the next thing goes hand in hand with that. And that is that I think there are clothes that are a clear yes, like stuff you love wearing, stuff you wear all the time, stuff that's versatile, comfortable, you feel good in. Like that's a yes, that should stay in wor your wardrobe. And there's stuff that's a no because it's broken, because it's... Um, it falls apart because it doesn't fit you anymore. But then there's this, this maybe pile. And I think it's important that we talk about that. And I do want to encourage you that you strongly consider like how you feel about the pieces. I think it's really, really important that we don't hold on to clothes that we don't feel good in. In the long run, I can guarantee you these are not the pieces that you're gonna reach for. That's a mistake I made in the past that I kept pieces because they were nice, because you are supposed to have one of these things, because I thought like my wardrobe had a gap without them or because I got it from somebody or because it was expensive. But the goal for a good minimalist wardrobe is that you have things that fit your lifestyle, that you like wearing, that you feel good in. So I think it's important that we keep the clothes that make us feel good, but that we are more ruthless when it comes to the stuff that does not fit us, that we don't feel beautiful and comfortable and good in, and that's just not practical in our everyday life. Because let's be honest, we will always grab our favorite shirt first and our second favorite shirt second, so there's kind of no, no reason to keep our seventh favorite pair of blue jeans because when is there an occasion where we really want to have our seventh favorite pair of blue jeans? And the next mistake that I think a lot of people make and I made a little bit I think in the past is you should not fear that you have nothing to wear. If you had enough to wear in the past, like if you did not run out of clothes, you should absolutely not fear that. I actually think it makes sense, especially if you have a lot of clothes and want to get the amount down by quite a bit to just pick out your favorite, favorite pieces and put aside all the rest of the things for now. Um, maybe your favorite, favorite pieces are already your minimalist wardrobe. And if it's not, like if that's not enough, you can over the next few weeks pick stuff from the from not your favorite pieces to bring back into your wardrobe. Or you can also just after putting your favorite stuff back into your wardrobe or deciding to keep it, go through the rest of your clothes and pick out a few things that you know you still need. But I think this fear of having nothing to wear is actually more likely the more clothes you have because you're overwhelmed and not when you have less clothes because when you have less clothes, you usually just know what you have and you'll find something to wear. And if you declutter your wardrobe, take out your favorite pieces and all the rest is kind of like not good for you, you don't like it and you still like don't have enough to wear, then maybe it's also time to find new pieces instead of taking all the old ones in again that you know you don't like. Of course, the only exception would be if you want to live very frugally, if you want to be very sustainably and just use up the things you have. But you're definitely just worth having clothes you like and you feel good in. That's what I want to say. The next thing also has to do with sustainability. And I do want to say that the most sustainable option is always just wearing what you have. So I think most of us have enough clothes 
so that when we declutter our wardrobes, we end up with still enough clothes to wear. But something that is really challenging after decluttering your closet, and that's something I really wanted to know and did not know and had to learn the hard way is getting rid of declutter clothes in a sustainable way is actually really hard. There are so many clothes on this planet. There are way too many, and especially there are way too many clothes that are made in bad quality out of bad materials that don't fit many bodies. And so it's really hard if you want to get rid of your clothes that don't fit you, that are not good enough for your life and give them to somebody else. So the most sustainable thing is always keep them and keep like wearing them. Um, but I totally understand if you have too much. I totally understand if you're overwhelmed and I think it's totally okay to declutter clothes. I would try to sell them. That's the best thing you can do to make sure that somebody else is gonna wear them. Give them away to somebody you know that wants to have them and otherwise donate or recycle. But we should know and we should keep in mind that that's just like mostly a downcycling process. A lot of... Um, companies that claim to recycle or upcycle clothes actually lie about parts of it or huge parts of it. So <sighs> getting rid of clothes is not the most sustainable thing. And the next thing that I really wish I knew because that's something like that's something I did wrong for a long time I think is that a minimalist wardrobe of course has less pieces so that you have to think less about it, stress less about it, care less about it use less space for it. But I do think that at a certain point, if your wardrobe gets smaller and smaller, you start to think, think more about it again because you have that small amount of clothes. And that's the point where you have to like worry about your laundry schedule and make sure that no piece like just breaks because then you would have a problem because you have the absolute minimum you can get by with. And so I think we should really think about where the sweet spot is there. And I was, I think, a bit much towards the extreme so that I started to think more about my wardrobe than necessary and that it would cause more stress than necessary, which is again not what we want. We want to have an easier and simpler and more enjoyable life. As soon as it gets harder because of the number, laundry, colors, concepts, pieces that require special care, I think we have to really really question if that's the right path to take. And there's another thing I really wish I knew before starting to declutter my wardrobe. It is so 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 important to watch what's coming in. Because if we do not stop or change our consumption habits, then we will absolutely end up at the overwhelming point um, again where we started out. That does not mean that we can never buy clothes again, absolutely not. That does not mean that we cannot thrift, that does not mean that we cannot just like try something out and be spontaneous or pick something up that we're not 100% sure of. I think that's absolutely still allowed, but we should have an intentional mindset because as soon as a piece of clothing enters our life, we then have to care for it. We have to store it somewhere, we have to wash it, we have to wear it, we have to declutter it and find a new home for it eventually. And so I think this is a powerful thing to really question our consumption habits if you want to make sure that the, the decluttering journey of our wardrobe is successful and we will actually end up with a more enjoyable and more simple wardrobe. So now I really want to wish you luck for decluttering your wardrobe. And I do hope that you have beautiful wardrobes that make you happy, that make it easy for you to get dressed and that you just enjoy so that clothes can be something fun or not stressful at least. And now I will link your video where I explain how I store my clothes so you can see what I own and how I store them and why. And I hope to see you there. Bye.